Hello YouTube, welcome to another one of my Duel Links videos and today I have for you a Mecha Phantom Beast deck with the, the new cards that we got in the mini box now I definitely had a lot more fun with this deck than I did with the uh, Ghosto deck um, simply because I've always liked Mecha Phantom Beast as an archetype and playing around with tokens it's, it's pretty fun and it didn't feel as, even though it's a control deck, it doesn't feel as stally as Gusto. So for our skill, we're running beatdown because uh, most of our monsters are going to gain levels whenever there's a Mecha Phantom Beast token on the field. Uh, so having beatdown lets us get that extra boost for uh, you know for them to get over uh, problematic monsters. It just works out pretty well. Uh, the monster lineup, we have three Mecha Phantom Beast Feather Wolf. He is really good. He's one of the new ones. Uh, on summon, you um, you get to summon, you get to special summon a token, level three win, zero attack, zero defense, and during the uh, battle during either player's battle phase, when when it can, when it attacks, when it's battling an opponent's monster, so when they attack into it or you attack them, um, you can tribute one of the tokens and gain a hundred eight hundred attack until the end of the turn. So pretty clutch. Um, I really like the effect. The fact that it gives you a token immediately is really, really strong because that's going to protect him from battle destruction and card destruction immediately. So real cool card. 1700 attack, 200 defense, not bad. Uh, we have two Mecha Phantom Beast Black Falcon. This guy is going to gain a token or it's going to give you a token whenever he declares an attack. Um, you can also tribute uh, a token. Uh, to target one monster your opponent controls, change, to, change it to face face up defense position. So this is the one that's going to help you control the duels because you're going to be able to stop whatever attack, you know, whatever problematic attack your opponent throws at you. And you're always going to be able to replenish that token simply by attacking into a monster. If the monster is in attack mode and he's bigger than you, you don't have to worry because if you have your toggle on, you can actually declare the attack, summon the token, Tribute the token and switch them into defense mode. So this is a very important card to play with your toggle on, just so that you don't uh, accidentally don't activate the effect and end up either suiciding or missing on your token. And then we have two Mecha Phantom Beast Mega Raptor, one of them prismatic for the flex. Uh, this guy is going to summon a token whenever another token is summoned onto the field. So if you use your aerial recharge while you have him on the field, you're gonna get a second token. Uh, which is really really good you can tribute a token you control and search any mecha phantom beast monster from your deck which is really really strong uh looking back i would probably run three of them if i wasn't running uh the witch raider but witch raider is a nice tech because i'm also running fires of doomsday uh, just to have more tokens available for tribute either to summon a witch raider or to tribute for um Mega Raptor to just search another Mecha Phantom Beast monster. So we have two Mecha Phantom Beast Blue Impala. I don't have a third one, otherwise I would try to figure out a way to make it work. Although I didn't really go into my Synchro deck that much, uh, but it's definitely nice to have. This guy can Synchro Summon uh, to can only be used to Synchro Summon a Machine Synchro Monster, but you can use monsters from your hand, which is just incredible. Um, most of the time you're gonna go into uh, Kirikuru Shogun because he's gonna let you switch a monster into you know, defense position to attack over it and stuff like that. We have uh, a Mecha Phantom, Mecha Phantom Beast Konkuruda. This card is it's good, but it could be better. It protects your tokens from being destroyed by battle or by card effect, but it doesn't protect, the tokens don't protect him, which kind of sucks a little bit. Uh, so if you you know if you have to decide whether to go for a 26 beater, then get switch a monster, uh, a monster's battle position, or this guy. Most of the time you're gonna go into Shogun, but there are random times where you want your Mecha Phantom Beast Gun Karuda instead. Um, I have one powered Insectron. It's just a machine beater. Uh, you can synchro summon into it with Mecha Phantom Beast Blue Impala and a token. Uh, Mega Phantom Beast Blue Impala does not gain levels by uh, with the monsters that are on the field, which is good because you otherwise it would mess up your entire synchro engine. So it's nice that it doesn't have that effect. Uh, one Fire of Doomsday, like I mentioned, just attack. Two enemy controllers. You have so many tokens that econ take is just too easy not to do. 
So really strong in the deck. We have Token Sunday, which uh, that lets you destroy all tokens you controlled and destroy cards up to them on the field up to the number of tokens destroyed by this effect. So really good. Uh, we also have Needle Stealing. Um, with all the tokens you summon, it's really easy to have four monsters on the field and uh, your tokens are going to die, but your monster, your Mecha Phantom Beast monsters are going to survive because you control the tokens when you activate Needle Stealing. So most of the time you're only going to wipe your opponent's board, which is really strong. Uh, but I don't have any more uh, than one, so I'm just running the one. Two Canadia and then two Aerial Recharge. I didn't want to maximize the Aerial Recharge because it felt a little clunky. Especially uh, because I want to set my enemy controller and my fires of doomsday. So two seem like a good spot if I draw into both of them There's always you know the chance of getting witch raider to just tribute them and destroy my opponent's back row That's why I tech this in because We we have a lot of removal and a lot of ways to deal with monsters But not really with back row. We kind of just have to force it or use witch raider to destroy it But that's it for the deck explanation. Let's go ahead and show you some duels yeah, definitely if I had to pick between Mecha Phantom Beast and Gusto, I think this is the the better deck. Uh, maybe not the one that has the, the highest ceiling potential, but it's definitely the most fun to use out of the two for me. So here we're going up against Jesse. I believe this was, yeah, Jesse Grit. And I actually, like I said, I playtest this while at work. So I completely missed that his skill was um, grip, and I thought I was going first, as you can see. I had a free turn to attack, but I literally hit begin duel, started working on stuff, and I was like, okay, I guess I'm going first, because he didn't do anything. So huge misplay in my part because of grit. Had I attacked, the grit would have not been active later down the, down the road, but um, luckily it doesn't cost me too much. So he's using Into the Void. Uh, Karakuri, which I had not seen before, but I get it. At first, I thought this was some sort of Dark World deck, and after summoning this token, um, if it is Dark World, the deck is kind of dead because they can't summon uh, Ceruli on my side of the field. But it turns out it's Karakuri. So he's gonna get Diamond Core, go for uh, Kokai Meru Ice, and luckily, he doesn't have enough cards to completely. I mean, he, he only destroys one token, so he doesn't have enough to completely clear my board. Uh, but I am going to take a ton of damage. However, I have another Tether Wolf, and I'm going to get a token, and I have an enemy controller. So, you know where this is going. We're going to go for the Econ take. Use the uh, Maximus effect to destroy the ice. So like I mentioned, here Grit is going to save him. Had I attacked beforehand, the Grit would have not been active anymore and I would have won but still he has no cards left in the hand Maximus is gonna get destroyed so he needed a top deck anyway doesn't get it I'm gonna activate fire some dupes stay just to get two tokens and we win the game we also had a Canadia for backup so even though I misplayed it didn't it didn't cost me in the end sometimes it's hard man like if they end turn very quickly and you're not paying attention to the turn count you're just like oh i'm going first and i know i have five cards in hand so that would that should have been a tail but it wasn't all right next we got a mind scan pegasus also running um kwaki Mare. so he's gonna go earn knight and that's pretty much it reveals another earn knight in hand I'm gonna go ahead and summon uh, Mecha Phantom Beast, Black Falcon. I did this because I wanted a token right away. Uh, there was no point in me switching him to defense mode because I couldn't destroy it. And uh, even though I'm taking 800 life points, my, my monster is gonna stay on the field, so. This proves uh, very clutch. And I don't understand why, what he was trying to accomplish with his play, but even with mind scan, he ends up playing exactly into my hand. So first of all, he summons uh, Sandman because he's afraid of aerial recharge. I don't know why. I would have gone for wall unless he didn't run wall because of the enemy controller. I feel like enemy controller should have been his uh, immediate priority, not the aerial recharge. 
but he goes for Sandman. Chooses to destroy my Firesome Doomsday, and that makes it super easy for me. All I have to do is activate uh, Black Falcon. Switch the uh, Maximus into the fence mode, which is the big, the big guy. I don't want to be taking all that damage. And then chain my Fires of Doomsday now that I have space. So now I have two tokens, and he cannot destroy my Falcon. Even though I can't use Falcon's effect anymore, I get to save my enemy controller. I have plenty of life points, and, uh, you know. <laughs> to top it off, I get a Tuck in Sunday. Destroy both monsters, summon another token. Now that the uh, Sandman is out of the field, I can summon another token using Aerial Recharge. Go for the Econ take after I activate Beatdown. And we get the win. Even, even if he'd had like a Karibo there, his Maximus was going to get destroyed, so the comeback was going to be hard for him. Uh, but I did kind of go all in on that play, so there was a slight chance for him to come back had he had a Karibo, but he didn't. And we take those. Alright, now we're going up against a Yami Yugi. I think those are the only Kwakimeru matches I saved. Because there's a lot of Kwakimeru in King of Games. Like a lot. I guess practice for a KC Cup maybe. Here we're going up against a balanced deck. Uh, we're going to start with Black Falcon. Unfortunately, we can't get a token right away. And this was all mind games. Now that I know what deck he's running, I'm treating these, I'm treating this as if he were a um, solemn scolding. So I'm gonna flip over my aerial recharge. He's gonna have to either destroy the token or go for the damage over my falcon. But I wasn't gonna tribute the token. So he goes over the damage. That lets me keep my aerial recharge, which is key because I can tribute that for Witch Raider. Now, if my opponent was a good player, <laughs> he would have known that there was no danger right here. I'm gonna activate my uh, aerial recharge to summon a token, but I've special summoned something during this turn, which means that even though I'm summoning my vision here, Witch Raider, I cannot activate the effect to destroy all spell and trap cards your opponent controls. But I knew he was gonna think that that's what's happening so he was going to negate with Solemn Scolding. Plays right into my hand. Now we can go for the Econ Cheese. And he helped me by dealing 3000 damage to himself. So had he not done that, all I have to do is uh, bait it with my enemy controller. You know, bait the Scolding with enemy controller. Use my Falcon effect because I still have a token. Either way, he was kind of screwed. But... Um, I definitely think he negated the normal summon, thinking that his entire back row was going to be destroyed. Alright, next we have an Akisa, and this was a um, Armage duel, and every time I duel Armages, the duels are so long, because they gain an absurd amount of life points early on, uh, but it was a good duel. So they're going to start two back row, Aroma Garden and Aroma Age Jasmine. Very, very good starting hand for them. Three back row now. Uh, I'm gonna go Feather Wolf. And I go for the attack. I, I figure he was I was gonna trigger some of the back row. Like there's no way three back row is gonna let my attack go through. And I wanted to keep two monsters on the field while having my needle ceiling. So that whatever he summoned, I could immediately flip my needle ceiling. That was the plan. Uh, we forced an enemy controller, which is good. And then he's gonna use um the spell absorbing life to get a card and this I did not see coming the trap stun definitely stunned me pun intended so now my needle ceiling play it's no longer viable uh, but I do have an enemy controller luckily for me so it's gonna go for junk synchron I have to econ take right here because I'm gonna steal the junk synchron I don't want him going into our mates and I don't really want him synchro summoning anything not only that um, any other monster that he has cannot get over, currently cannot get over my Tether Wolf. So he would have to summon another monster. And at that point, he's killing his own Junk Synchron. So I was getting insane value out of this Econ take. Sure enough, he's gonna summon another monster. And even though my uh, Tether Wolf is gonna die, 
he's losing his junk synchro, which is just as good for me. You know, we're both losing a monster, and and I already have a way to deal with his entire field of monsters the following turn. So it goes Aroma Garden. Rosemary is gonna flip this into attack mode to deal more damage. Uh, obviously, he doesn't have to respect my back row because he used Trap Stun. But I have a Falcon, so all I have to do is attack with my toggle on. Uh, on declaration, I'm gonna summon a token, and now I can flip over my needle ceiling, get rid of everything, and hit it for 1200. But look at that, he's still at 5600. Picks up a uh, Rosemary, very clutch for them. Uh, but I'm gonna use my aerial recharge and flip that back into defense mode. Unfortunately, I can't keep my aerial recharge, but I get a great top deck in Tether Wolf. That's gonna let me summon a token, go for the attack. Spell Absorbing Life is going to switch my Black Falcon, but it doesn't matter because I still have a token on the field, so I'm gonna be able to stop anything, especially uh, an Aura Mage Rosemary. And at this point, you know, I'm pretty much in complete control of the duel, even though they have an absurd amount of life points. They, they're they not going to be able to top deck out of this. The best they could do is something like Jasmine into back row, which they do. But even then, I have a Witch Raider, so that wasn't, uh, you know, too big of a threat. Uh, a Junk Synchron into our mates would have been nice. But again, because I have my Black Falcon and my tokens, I could just switch that into defense mode. So from here on out, it's just me controlling the duel, slowly chipping away at those 9,000 life points now. Go for the beatdown, go for uh, Witch Raider, and that is more than enough to finish this game. But yeah, very long duel, but pretty fun. A lot of back and forth. But once I had the card advantage, there was really nothing he was going to be able to do. And I feel like that... That whole duel was turned around on that Econ take of his Junk Synchron. Alright, so we're going up against the chest, and this is just a, a meme replay that I saved, because this guy was trying to... He was trying to Cyberstein on me in 2019. Like, why, why are we going backwards? Let the meta go forward, let the memes go forward. Leave Cyberstein in 2017, alright? Uh, so we're gonna get a token and we have an enemy controller. <sighs> Golden Ladybug, Thunder Dragon. Into Reload. The place, man, the place. Summons a Cyberstein, Econ take, and your entire deck is dead. Set two back row for the bluff that I'm not buying. And then we get the scoop. I mean, it's king of games, so meme away, but that's old. That's old news, man. You're not going to shock anyone with that deck anymore. So anyway, uh, I really enjoy Mecha Phantom Beast. Next time I stream, I'll probably play some more, uh, especially since the ladder is going to be reset uh, when I stream tomorrow. Because if I stream tonight, it's going to be Resident Evil. So if I stream tomorrow, the ladder is going to be reset, and we might use this to climb for a little bit, maybe to try and get out of Platinum uh, and... Yeah, I had a lot of fun with this deck, man. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, like, comment, and subscribe if you want. Join my Discord if you haven't. The link will be down in the description. Along with my PayPal link if you guys want to support my channel, support my content. I really, really appreciate that. And until next time.